Bună seara, dragi telespectatori! O seară interesantă, fiindcă vom vorbi astăzi despre energia cosmică și despre forță sau sursa vieții sau în medicina holistică forța vieții. Când vorbim despre sursă, vedeți, noi ne gândim la hrană de obicei, la trup și cât de corect, de exemplu, ne alimentăm, dacă este natural sau nu. Dar trebuie să ne, trebuie să ne gândim mult mai profund la hrană, pentru că adevărata noastră energie, o să vedeți în această emisiune, cam 90% vine din cosmos și nu de pe pământ. A small speck. Each one of us is in search of good health. Peace, knowledge, prosperity, harmony, and overall a happy and blissful life at all given times and situations. Each and every person strives hard to achieve this state. But can this really be achieved? Yes, this can be achieved. All this is possible only by understanding cosmic energy and self-knowledge. Now let us know about cosmic energy. The cosmic energy exists everywhere in the cosmos. It is the bond between the galaxies the planets, humans, and molecules. It is the space between each and everything. It is the bond which keeps the whole cosmos in order. Cosmic energy is the life force. This cosmic energy is essential to maintain the order of our life and to expand our consciousness. Cosmic energy is the base for all our actions and functions. We receive some amount of cosmic energy in deep sleep and in total silence. We are using this energy for our day-to-day -day activities of our mind like seeing, speaking, hearing, thinking and all actions of our body. This limited energy gained through sleep is not sufficient for these activities. That is why we feel exhausted, tired and tensed. This leads to mental and physical stress and all kinds of illnesses. The only way to overcome this is to get more and more cosmic energy. Cosmic energy is essential to maintain the order of our life, to lead a healthy and happy life, to totally involve in all situations we are in, to obtain knowledge and finally for expansion of our consciousness. Abundant cosmic energy is obtained only through meditation. Sleep is unconscious meditation. Meditation is conscious sleep. In sleep we get limited energy in meditation we get abundant energy. This energy enhances the power of our body, mind and intellect. It opens the doors for our sixth sense and beyond. 
with this boosted energy through meditation, we will be relaxed, healthy and happy. It also helps to reach greater heights in the physical realm. Meditation is nothing but a journey of our consciousness towards the Self. In meditation, we consciously travel from body to mind, mind to intellect, intellect to Self and beyond. To do meditation, first we have to stop all the functions of our body and mind, that is, body movements, seeing, speaking and thinking. Now, let us know how to do meditation. For meditation, the first thing is the posture. You may sit in any posture. The posture must be very comfortable and stable. We can meditate either on a floor or on a chair. We can meditate in any place wherever we feel comfortable. Sit comfortably, cross your legs, clasp your fingers. Now close your eyes. Stop inner or outer chatter. Don't chant any mantra. Just relax. Totally relax. Just relax. When we cross our legs and clasp our fingers, energy circuit is formed and gives more stability. Eyes are doors of the mind, so eyes should be closed. Mantra chanting or any chattering inner or outer are the activities of the mind so it should be stopped when body relaxes consciousness travels to the next zone mind and intellect mind is nothing but a bundle of thoughts there are numerous thoughts always coming to the surface of the mind. Whenever there are thoughts in the mind, we may get many questions, known or unknown. To transcend the mind and intellect, one has to observe the breath. Observation is the nature of the self. So, one should just witness the breath. Don't do conscious breathing. Don't inhale or exhale consciously. Let inhalation or exhalation happen on its own. Just observe the normal breathing. This is the main key. This is the way. Don't go behind the thoughts. Don't cling to queries, questions or thoughts. Cut the thought. Come back to the breath. Observe normal breathing. Be with your breath. Then the density of the thoughts reduces. Slowly breath becomes thinner and shorter.
finally breath becomes the smallest and settles like a flash in between the eyebrows. In this state one will have no breath and no thought. He will be totally thoughtless. This state is called Nirmal Stiti or no thought state. This is the meditative state. In this state, we will be under the shower of cosmic energy. The more meditation one does, the more will be the cosmic energy one receives. Deci ne încărcăm energetic în somn, medităm, când, când medităm sau când ne rugăm, pentru că și rugăciunea și meditația înseamnă același lucru, sunt două modalități diferite, o să vedem de încărcare. Deci interacționăm practic cu sursa noastră, energia cosmică și apoi dacă noi ne încărcăm, care este scopul nostru, ce trebuie să facem noi? Noi trebuie să începem să comunicăm cu ce este în jurul nostru, cu oamenii din jurul nostru. Cea mai bună formă de comunicare este prin iubire. Putem să comunicăm și sub alte forme, dar nu sunt niște forme care să ne lase la sfârșit încărcați de energie. Dacă comunicăm cu iubire, noi înmulțim această energie, o creștem. Dacă comunicăm cu ură, de exemplu, sau cu frică, o să vedeți că pierdem în această interacțiune cu cei din jur propria noastră energie. Până nu de mult consideram că energia cosmică este alcătuită din atomi, din electroni, neutroni și protoni. Totul până la apariția teoriei corzilor. Einstein found that the medium that transmits gravity is space itself. The idea goes like this. Imagine space is a substrate of all there is. Einstein said space is nice and flat if there's no matter present, but if there is matter in the environment, such as the sun, it causes the fabric of space to warp, to curve, and that communicates the force of gravity. Even the Earth warps space around it. Now look at the moon. The moon is kept in orbit, according to these ideas, because it rolls along a valley in the curved environment that the sun and the moon and the earth can all create by virtue of their presence. If we go to a full frame view of this, the earth itself is kept in orbit because it rolls along a valley in the environment that's curved because of the sun's presence. That is this new idea about how gravity actually works. Now, but for those of us who are a little bit more practically minded, two questions immediately arise from his observation. Number one, 
if there are more dimensions in space, where are they? We don't seem to see them. And number two, does this theory really work in detail when you try to apply it to the world around us? Now, the first question was answered in 1926 by a fellow named Oscar Klein. He suggested that dimensions might come in two varieties. There might be big, easy-to-see dimensions, but there might also be tiny, curled-up dimensions, curled up so small, even though they're all around us, that we don't see them. Let me show you that one visually. So imagine you're looking at something like a cable supporting a traffic light. It's in Manhattan, near Central Park. It's kind of irrelevant. But the cable looks one-dimensional from a distant viewpoint. But you and I all know that it does have some thickness. It's very hard to see it, though, from far away. But if we zoom in and take the perspective of, say, a little ant walking around, little ants are so small that they can access all of the dimensions, the long dimension, but also this clockwise, counterclockwise direction. And uh, I hope you appreciate this. It took so long to get these ants <laughs> to do this. But this illustrates the fact that dimensions can be of two sorts, big and small, and the idea is that maybe the big dimensions around us are the ones that we can easily see, but there might be additional dimensions curled up, sort of like the circular part of that cable, so small that they have so far remained invisible. Let me show you what that would look like. So if we take a look, say, at space itself, I can only show, of course, two dimensions on a screen. Some of you guys will fix that one day. But anything that's not flat in the screen as a new dimension goes smaller, 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 and way down in the microscopic depths of space itself, this is the idea. You could have additional curled up dimensions. Here is a little shape of a circle, so small that we don't see them. But if you were a little ultra microscopic ant walking around, you could walk in the big dimensions that we all know about. That's like the grid part. But you could also access the tiny curled up dimension that's so small that we can't see it with the naked eye or even with any of our most refined equipment, but deeply tucked into the fabric of space itself, the idea is there could be more dimensions, as we see there. Now, that's an explanation about how the universe could have more dimensions than the ones that we see, but what about the second question that I asked? Does the theory actually work when you try to apply it to the real world? Well, it turns out that Einstein and Kluze and many others worked on trying to refine this framework and apply it to the physics of the universe as was understood at the time. And in detail, it didn't work. In detail, for instance, they couldn't get the mass of the electron to work out correctly in this theory. So many people worked on it, but by the 40s, certainly by the 50s, this strange but very compelling idea of how to unify the laws of physics had gone away. Until something wonderful happened in our age. In our era, a new approach to unify the laws of physics is being pursued by physicists such as myself, many others around the world. It's called superstring theory, as you were indicating. And the wonderful thing is that superstring theory has nothing to do at first sight with this idea of extra dimensions. But when we study superstring theory, we find that it resurrects the idea in a sparkling new form. So let me just tell you how that goes. Superstring theory, what is it? Well, it's a theory that tries to answer the question, what are the basic, fundamental, indivisible, uncuttable constituents making up everything in the world around us? The idea is like this. So imagine we look at a familiar object, just a candle in a holder, and imagine that we want to figure out what it is made of. So we go on a journey deep inside the object and examine the constituents. So deep inside, we all know you go sufficiently far down, you have atoms. We also all know that atoms are not the end of the story. They have little electrons that swarm around a central nucleus with neutrons and protons. Even the neutrons and protons have smaller particles inside of them, known as quarks. That is where conventional ideas stop here is the new idea of string theory. Deep inside any of these particles, there is something else. The something else is this dancing filament of energy. It looks like a vibrating string. That's where the idea of string theory comes from. And just like the vibrating strings that you just saw on a cello can vibrate in different patterns, these can also vibrate in different patterns. They don't produce different musical notes. Rather, they produce the different particles making up the world around us. So if these ideas are correct, this is what the ultramicroscopic landscape of the universe looks like. It's built up of a huge number of these little tiny filaments 
of vibrating energy, vibrating in different frequencies. The different frequencies produce the different particles. The different particles are responsible for all the richness in the world around us. And there you see unification. Because matter particles, electrons and quarks, radiation particles, photons, gravitons, are all built up from one entity. So matter and the forces of nature all are put together under the rubric of vibrating strings, and that's what we mean by a unified theory. Now here is the catch. When you study the mathematics of string theory, you find that it doesn't work in a universe that just has three dimensions of space. It doesn't work in a universe with four dimensions of space, nor five, nor six. Finally, you can study the equations and show that it works only in a universe that has ten dimensions of space and one dimension of time. It leads us right back to this idea of Kaluza and Klein that our world, when appropriately described, has more dimensions than the ones that we see. Physicianul Brian Green. Ne spune că aceste vibrații de energie, invizibile pentru ochii umani, reprezintă energia noastră din jur, care ne încarcă. Sunt niște vibrații. Um, oare cineva s-a gândit să pună în evidență aceste vibrații care ne înconjoară? O să vedeți că da. The theremin is an electronic musical instrument. It was invented in 1919 by a Russian physicist, Leon Theremin. Besides its unusual appearance, the theremin is also unique in that it's played without being touched. The theremin typically consists of a box with two metal antennas which create an electromagnetic field. The musician stands in front of the instrument and moves his hands in the proximity of the two antennas, which forms a capacitor between his hands and the antennas. The capacitance of the electromagnetic field varies by the distance between the player and the instrument. The upright antenna controls the pitch. When the right hand approaches the antenna, the pitch gets higher. When the hand moves away from it, the pitch gets lower again. Small rapid movements of the right hand can create vibrato. The loop antenna controls the volume. Approaching the antenna makes the volume softer, so the left hand is responsible for dynamics and articulation. There is no physical contact with the instrument. Playing the theremin in a precise melodic way requires much practice. Pitch control is especially challenging, as there is no guidance no keys or fingerboard positions. The player has to rely on his ear, and he can only correct a pitch when it is audible. Skilled players who control the combination of movements precisely can achieve complex and expressive performances. În medicina, mai este cineva care lucrează cu vibrații și face reconectări, vindecând. Conectează sursa cosmică cu corpul, sistemul energetic uman și corpul vibrează și el, cum o să vedem. Este vorba de domnul doctor Earl Perl cu vindecarea reconectivă. Eric, my first question. How would you describe the process of reconnective healing to someone who never heard of it or who never heard of intelligent frequencies, energy or things like that? Today, we have an expanded understanding of what comprises us, the world, the universe. We know the basis of everything is energy. I'm energy, you're energy, this chair is energy, the book you're holding is energy, everything is energy. And so reconnective healing allows us to more consciously interact with the energy of the universe. Harness it in a way and yet simultaneously access it in an expanding way that helps us return to a state of balance. Now by balance I mean health. Not just 
a limited concept of health, such as a physical healing or a mental healing or an emotional healing, but a balance that incorporates mental, physical, emotional, spiritual relationships, um, love life, even our career paths seem to accelerate and expand for us once we step in to this expanded level of balance. You see, everything here in the universe is energy. And we, here on Earth, we exist within four dimensions of this energy. The four dimensions are height, width, depth, and time. So as science explains this, if we visualize a bubble or a balloon here in this huge, vast, endless, multidimensional universe, this balloon or bubble is made up of height, width, depth, and time, and everything inside of the bubble here has been energy. Reconnective healing is a way to access healing that does not require any techniques. Allows us to become more than our techniques, allows us to become more than technique itself. It's more than Reiki, Jirage, and Shin, Shigang. It's more than our energy healing techniques, even the brand new ones because technique gives us small portions that we access. Limits, maybe. It's a limitation. Reconnective healing allows us to, A, access all of the energy within our existence. And our reward for that is that time today is different than it was 50 years ago. Time is moving faster in all directions at once. So our balloon of existence is expanding becoming more thin, more sheer, more permeable. The energy of time that has been within our balloon is now interacting with a timeless level of energy, light, and information for the first time. So we are reconnecting not only with the part of us that's been here, but we are reconnecting with the more timeless universe. If we speak with people, for example, who've had life after death experiences, real ones, they report returning to a light, recognizing it's a light that we all come from, that we all return to. And it's a fuller consciousness, understanding of the universe and existence that we have there. We are now able to access more of that here on Earth. These are unusual concepts to some of us hearing them for the first time. Yes. 50 years ago, people might have said, this is crazy. Yeah. Today, science is confirming and validating what gifts reconnective healing is bringing to us. Here in Romania, not too long ago, people believing in this would have kept us very quiet, under wraps, sort of secretive. Yet today, more and more, this is becoming a prominent way of thinking here. And I understand a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit more about the Romanian people that I might a lot of other societies because my grandmother was Romanian. She Whoa. came from Bessarabia. Whoa. <laughs> and so I understand through her and her brother and her sisters and other people where the thoughts were. Yeah. And as I come and visit here where the thoughts are. and. Even now I see a change because it's been five years since we've been here in Bucharest. And what's interesting about this is that as the consciousness of Romania has expanded even over those past five years, the healing training programs, the reconnective training programs that we're bringing here are brand new. They are not the more limited ones that we had here five years ago, but they're brand new training programs new this year, so we're bringing them back because I have to, I feel compelled to. When did you come for the first time in Romania? And who invited you? How, how did you come here in Romania? Well, it started the way it usually starts in countries, which is, my book in English is called The Reconnection, Heal Others, Heal Yourself. It's now an international bestseller in 39 different languages. So as soon as a, um, as soon as a Romanian publisher became interested in publishing the book and printed it, I knew I wanted to bring the seminars here because I had never been here. But as I said, you know, my 
my part of my family lineage is yes. Romanian, so I, I was excited to come. I'm not sure what year we came first. I would guess that it was maybe around 2004, give or take a year. Yeah. Um, but I came a few times, maybe two years in a row, maybe a year or two in between, and then we haven't been here for five years. But just last year, we entirely changed the Reconnective Healing seminars that we used to give and expanded them now into training programs. What will happen is, I'll demonstrate a level of the work from the stage. Then there'll be massage tables set up on the, on the floor throughout yeah. the room. So one person will lie down on the massage table, one person will stand up at the massage table. And the seminar will be simultaneously translated into Romanian, so there'll be headsets, so you don't have to understand English, and I yeah. don't have to understand Romanian. Yes. We'll take your hands, the teaching assistants and I, we'll show you how to feel the frequencies, how to find them, and many of the teaching assistants are native Romanian speakers, so you'll have people to be able to communicate with directly. We'll show you how to feel this and play with it, and you will start to see the person on the massage table in front of you go into involuntary movements of their fingers, their arms, their legs, the muscles of their face, their eyebrows, their eyes. Then we'll trade places so you get to lie down and experience it while they start to work on you. We'll go back to the chairs, talk about what we just experienced, do some question and answer, more science, more philosophy, learn a new level of the work, go back to the tables again. We'll bring in people from outside of the hotel who don't know what to expect, so you can start doing professional sessions with them. We'll learn how to do this via distance, so you don't have to be in the same room or even the same city or country as the person. Learn how to do it holographically. Learn how to start and set up and start your own practice and build your own healing practice if you want to. We'll go into subtlety and nuances, ways to change and increase the experience for other people and then expand the healing process. Give me one hand for a moment. I want you to feel this. Right here, this will be easier for you. Yeah. Hold your hand right here, open your fingers. Hold them open like that. Now, I bring my hand in here and I watch that movement of your fingers. My whole arm begins to float. If I push it down, it floats back up again. And you keep your fingers open, but watch them. See how they pull back in? Do you see it? Do you not see it? It might yes, be a funny yes, angle yes. for you. Like, watch your index finger. Here, I'll help. Yes, I see. Watch it pull and move in that direction. <laughs> you see it? Yes. Are you moving your finger or is your move, finger moving by itself? No, it's, it's moving. It's moving by itself, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Notice as I pull further away, you would think it would get weaker, but the sensation pulls more, actually becomes stronger. Because this is not just energy. This takes us beyond energy into aspects of light and information. See how your fingers are doing that now? Yes, what I does feel it feel some... like? I feel like, like some small vibrations and tickling. And a tickling, right? Yes. Now let's try this hand. Keep it right there where it is. Open your fingers. Hold them strong. So this way the camera has a different angle. I'll bring my hand in here. I watch your fingertips. Will you keep your fingers strong? Yes. But when I wiggle my fingers like that, there's still a tendency for them to want to pull a little bit. What's the sensation? Now you're holding your fingers strong and still intentionally. What do you feel though when I do this? As you said, it's moving itself. I, I don't know, it's like having its own energy. I don't know how to say. So the more explain. you try to hold your fingers yeah. still, the more you feel it pull against that. Yeah. Now, if you relaxed your fingers a little bit, see how they start to move? Because that's yes. what they've been wanting to do. They've wanted to have that movement yeah. in them. See how your little finger yes. does that once in a while? So now it's an easier sensation. What is happening? That's the question. What is happening, according to the scientists, is that because these are new frequencies that many of the researchers feel we haven't been able to access here on Earth before, 
It's the first time our tissue interacts with it. And so our muscles and our tissues begin to respond in a certain way that allows them to expand in their ability to carry this, to interact with it, to shift, to accommodate with it. And then we teach you how to begin to become familiar with it and work with it to help others have their healings. According to six independent studies so far, this simple interaction that you and I just had was actually allowing your DNA to restructure in itself, to heal, to emit higher levels of more harmonic or coherent or balanced light. And what we know today is that the body heals through this communication of light. O să vă prezint cartea domnului doctor Eric Pearl, Reconectarea vindecă-i pe alții, vindecă-te pe tine. Sunt foarte mulți medici vindecători care lucrează în reconectare la ora asta. Sunt și persoane care nu sunt medici și lucrează. O să citesc un pic, uitați ce spune. Oare de ce doctorii și cercetătorii faimoși în domeniul medical din toată lumea sunt interesați de vindecările extraordinare pe care le relatează pacienții domnului doctor Eric Pearl? Ce înseamnă când acești pacienți relatează dispariția bruscă a unor afecțiuni, cum ar fi cancerul, boli de generate de sida și pareza spastică? Și ce înseamnă atunci când oamenii care interacționează cu domnul dr. Perl relatează apariția bruscă a unor capacități de a accesa această energie vindecătoare pentru ei și pentru alții? Uh, și de asemenea o altă carte pe care tot am prezentat-o, dar vedeți, este mereu de actualitate și anume Medicina Vibrațională a domnului doctor Richard Gerber. Uh, o altă medicină, fiindcă vorbim de vibrații, uh, este introducerea în Medicina Vibrațională. Am avut o emisiune în trecut despre acest lucru. Este vorba că și în oamenii de știință români, cercetători din facultăți și medici au început să studieze fenomenul vibrațional. Medicina holistică fiind o medicină vibrațională, vorbim de vibrații, vorbim despre acele energii cu care lucrează pur și simplu medicina holistică. Și, în un ultimul rând, atingerea cuantică, puterea de a vindeca, sunt cărți noi care au apărut și care provoacă, să zicem, toată intelectualitatea medicală din țara noastră și din, din străinătate. Și acum o să mai vedeți și alte exemplare. De exemplu, sunt trei, sunt trei cărți de atingerea cuantică. Atingerea cuantică pare să fie prima tehnică ce ne permite tuturor să devenim vindecători cu drepturi de pline.